Dax Flame has been on YouTube for more than 16 years, yet to this day it is still unknown whether Dax Flame is playing a character or if he genuinely is who he portrays himself to be. Cool, yeah. In this video, I'll be presenting all of the evidence for and against the theory that Dax Flame is just playing a character. But first, here's a quick 5 minute recap of Dax Flame's entire career to bring everybody up to speed. Dax Flame started his YouTube channel in 2007 where he would frequently post video diaries and short films. Video diaries or vlogs were a dime a dozen on YouTube, but what made Dax Flame stand out from the crowd were the outlandish and oftentimes hilarious stories he would tell about his daily life, as well as the raw childlike attitude and emotion he would display whenever he was on camera. Dax quickly gained popularity and in a matter of months, his channel had grown to become the 16th most subscribed channel on all of YouTube. Over the course of about two and a half years, Dax put out close to 150 video diaries, and he even collaborated with some other famous YouTubers and celebrities like Lisa Nova, Smosh, and Josh Peck. But Dax Flame's video diaries weren't popular just because of his singing talent or suave fashion sense. From the very start, many of Dax's subscribers were enthralled by the mystery of it all. Could this Dax Flame character actually be real? Or is this all just an act? Public opinion swayed back and forth with the release of each new video. Many people believed that Dax was just a talented actor and there was no possible way a 15 year old kid would actually act like this in real life. However, on the other side, just as many people were convinced that Dax Flame was being 100% genuine in his videos, with many people in this camp coming to the conclusion that Dax was on the autism spectrum or perhaps that he had some other condition. Throughout all of this, and even to this day, Dax vehemently denies any accusations that he was acting. And he has also stated on multiple occasions that he has never been diagnosed with any mental conditions. As time passed, Dax Flame started to post videos less and less frequently. He only posted one video in 2009 and two videos in 2010. But just when it was starting to look like maybe Dax Flame had given up on content creation, Dax came back in a big way. Like, Hollywood big. In 2012, Dax Flame was cast in supporting roles in major Hollywood motion pictures Project X and 21 Jump Street. Unfortunately, however, his acting career never really took off beyond that. He did reprise his role as Zack in 22 Jump Street and had a couple of other small roles here and there, but nothing quite as lucrative as Project X or 21 Jump Street. Dax then reappeared on his YouTube channel briefly in 2014 to promote his new memoir, I'm Just Sitting on a Fence, but after that it wouldn't be until 2017 when Dax would finally upload again. From this point on in Dax Flame's career, he is noticeably less… outrageous, I guess you could say? Or maybe it makes more sense just to say that if he is indeed playing a character, the humor is much more subtle from this point on. Since 2017, Dax, now struggling to afford rent in Los Angeles, has continuously attempted to promote new business ideas while also attempting to reinvent his channel in unique, sometimes bizarre ways. His first big business idea was a new product he invented which was basically an automated indoor garden to grow produce. He created a Kickstarter not for the product itself, but for a documentary about the making of the product which was fully funded with over $11,000. This resulted in the creation of Dax Flame's first feature length documentary film, Indoor Garden, a Dax Flame documentary. He then ended up working at an ice cream shop, during which time he wrote his second memoir, Ice Cream Man. Soon after this, he created WealthyInfluencer.com along with a collection of video guides on how to make money as an influencer. But his main goal with WealthyInfluencer.com seems to be to sell the domain. In July of 2020, famous YouTuber iDubbbz visited Dax Flame in LA to film a documentary about him. The documentary, called Ice Cream Man, has by now garnered more than 7 million views, which has done a lot to reinvigorate public interest in Dax's own channel. Not only that, but as part of the documentary, iDubbbz helped Dax to produce a pilot episode for a smoothie-themed game show called Smoothie Madness. Dax has since gone on to self-produce 19 more episodes of Smoothie Madness, with the most recent episode being published in December 2022. 
Although iDubs and Smoothie Madness did give Dax Flame a major boost in popularity for a while, the years of 2021 and 2022 were a bit of a struggle for Dax's channel. He continued to upload videos somewhat regularly, but overall views for the channel were down. Dax made some very bizarre choices concerning the direction of his channel during this period, which probably didn't help. But with that said, with the way he was constantly trying out new things, it was clear that Dax Flame was committed to his goal of earning a living as a content creator. iDubs again gave Dax Flame a helping hand by producing five episodes of a talk show called The Hot Seat with Dax Flame, which is a half hour long show in the format of a television late night talk show. The first two episodes, released in late 2022, have received 1.3 million and 580,000 views respectively on iDub's channel, but the remaining three episodes were much less successful, and it doesn't seem like this show has really had much impact on the success of Dax's own channel. And that brings us to the present. On January 1st, 2023, Dax uploaded a video titled Letting AI Control My Life for a Year. In the video, he says he'll be letting ChatGPT make decisions for him throughout 2023, which he did do for the first half of the year. Letting AI run his channel for him might sound like a crazy idea, but the results were pretty promising. Dax Flame's monthly views this year have been the highest they've been since 2020. So now that we're all caught up, let's talk about why so many people believe that Dax Flame is just playing a character. Let's start from the beginning. In Dax's very first video, he says that his real name is Bernice Jacques III. However, this was proven to be untrue sometime in 2007 when a website for a youth baseball team was discovered. One of the kids in the photos, who was labeled as bore a striking resemblance to Dax Flame. Further evidence was uncovered in the form of a yearbook photo that was labeled with the same name as the baseball photo. With the evidence mounting, Dax eventually responded in December 2007 with a video titled, My Real Name Is Not Bernice Jacques. In the video, Dax Flame admits that Bernice Jacques is a fake name he was using for the sake of privacy. While it does make sense to use a false name online for privacy, this admission does potentially point to an inconsistency. Because in a previous Dax Flame video diary, Dax's mother can be heard outside his room calling him Bernice. Bernice, wipe out Mom! If it's just been a fake name all along, then why would his mom call him Bernice? Well, this actually isn't the smoking gun it first appears to be. Because in the description of the My Real Name Is Not Bernice Jock video, Dax writes that Bernice is actually his grandmother's name and his mom and grandma actually do call him Bernice as a pet name. So, okay, that explanation makes enough sense. For now. But even so, there are some glaring inconsistencies in early Dax Flame video diaries for which no good explanation has ever been provided. So let's take a look at the very first ongoing story arc told through Dax's video diaries. In Dax Flame's second video diary, he talks about how he's going to make friends with a kid at school named Jacob. At the beginning of this video, he says, It's 6.30 and it's December 8th. Remember that date. In Dax's next video diary, which was presumably recorded on that same day after he returned home from school, Dax recounts the very hard-to-believe tale of his failed attempt to befriend Jacob by starting a playful pee fight with him in the bathroom. Yes, you heard that right. A pee fight. While this story on its face is very absurd, it's not outside the realm of possibility that a neurodivergent kid might actually think that something so strange might actually be an effective way to befriend someone. Fast forward to Dax's fifth video diary recorded December 13th, and we learn that Dax's science teacher has assigned Jacob to be Dax's partner for a science lab, an event that Dax appears to be quite excited about. <laughs> yes! Dax's sixth video diary entry begins with Dax stating, It's December 23rd and that Jacob is going to be coming over to finish their science lab. And this is where things get weird, so pay attention. The 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th video diary entries on Dax Flame's channel were all recorded on the same day. 
December 23rd. The 6th and 7th diary entries show Dax before Jacob's arrival as Dax sets the scene for the viewers and prepares for Jacob's arrival. The key piece of information to remember about these pre-arrival videos is that Dax clearly states they are being recorded on Saturday, December 23rd. The next video is where things start to become a bit more interesting. The video begins with Dax setting up his camera facing the front door. He then goes downstairs and opens the door, at which point we see Jacob poke his head around the screen door and say, Bernice? Did you catch that? We've already established that Bernice is not Dax's real name. Furthermore, in Dax's first video, he says that he doesn't like the name Bernice since it's kinda girly. And in the video description of the My Real Name Is Not Bernice Jacques video, when Dax did finally admit that Bernice is a false name, he refers to it as a stupid pet name. So it's pretty clear that Dax does not like the name Bernice. So even if his mom really does call him by that name, it is very unlikely that other kids from his school like Jacob would know him as Bernice. However, at this point in Dax Flame history, it had not yet been discovered that Bernice Jacques was a fake name. So if the Dax Flame character is just a hoax, and this Jacob we're seeing in this video is just an actor, then it would make complete sense that the script for this video would have Jacob referring to Dax as Bernice. So already, we've got a pretty strong indication that this whole visit from Jacob is fake. But what you've seen so far is actually only the tip of the iceberg. So Jacob arrives at the front door and then he and Dax head upstairs, at which point Dax picks up his laptop and looks into the camera and says something along the lines of one second, I'll... Then the video ends. The next video begins where the last one left off. Dax positions his camera facing the spot where Jacob is sitting and then goes to join him. Dax offers Jacob some snacks, which Jacob accepts, just before pulling out his schoolwork. Halfway through the video, Jacob suddenly asks, why did you pee on me yesterday? Okay, have you been paying attention? As stated in Dax's second video diary, the date of the infamous pee fight was December 8th. So why then does Jacob ask on December 23rd, why did you pee on me yesterday? It really doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess it's possible that Jacob just misspoke and he really meant to say something like the other day instead of yesterday, but I don't know, it seems pretty unlikely. Anyway, after Jacob asked Dax why he did what he did, the video continues for about two more minutes when we suddenly hear a phone ringing. Dax then gets up to answer the phone and cuts the camera off. The next video begins with Dax turning the camera back on, and he explains to Jacob that it was just his dad on the phone saying that he was going to be home soon. So again, this video picks up where the last video left off. 30 seconds into the video, Dax yells out to tell his mom that his dad will be home soon. We then hear Dax's mom respond with, Okay, we'll tell Jacob he needs to go home kind of soon. Okay, so this one might be a little less obvious than the other pieces of evidence we've discussed, but think about it. Is it not a bit odd for Dax's mom to say that Jacob needs to go home soon? Although the camera does stop and start again a few times throughout this whole scene, it's pretty clear that very little time elapses between each video. At the time when Dax's mom says that Jacob needs to go home soon, Jacob has only been in the house for about five minutes. The longest gap between videos would have been when Dax was on the phone with his dad, but even if that phone call took 15 minutes, which seems unlikely, that would mean Jacob was only at Dax's house for about 20 minutes. Even if we assume that Dax's mother doesn't know that Jacob is there to work on a science lab, it seems odd for her to request that Jacob leave so soon. I know this isn't exactly hard evidence, but in combination with the other peculiarities surrounding Jacob's visit, it seems likely that this was just another oversight in the scripting of a staged scene. So let's review. When Jacob first enters the house, he refers to Dax as Bernice, which we now know to be a fake name. Then, Jacob asks Dax, why did you pee on me yesterday, even though the supposed date of the pee fight incident was more than two weeks prior. And finally, 
Dax's mom says that Jacob needs to go home kinda soon, even though Jacob has almost definitely only been at the house for less than 10 minutes. In my opinion, these three pieces of evidence are enough to say that Jacob's visit was staged. However, none of this is hard proof. I mean, as strange as it sounds, it's not impossible that Jacob's visit was real. But what's interesting is that outside of the Jacob videos, there is only one other Dax Flame video diary entry featuring someone other than Dax inside Dax's home. And this video also seems to be staged. So let's take a look at Dax's April 2007 video titled, First Guest Appearance Ruins Your Privileges, He Is a Idiot. This video features Dax's cousin Alec, and it's actually the only Dax Flame video diary entry where someone other than Dax himself is inside Dax's room. Seriously, what is your problem? Shut up. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, mom! The video does seem pretty convincing at first glance, but if you play it back frame by frame, it actually looks like Dax's cousin just slaps Dax on the hand. The video is very low quality and only 12 frames per second, but it really looks like his cousin's hand does not actually come into contact with Dax's face. I know some of you are probably thinking, well, maybe he really did try to slap Dax, but Dax just blocked it. But in the description for the video, Dax writes, I could have easily blocked the slap, but he frickin' didn't warn me. So clearly Dax is making the claim that he was actually slapped in the face. Speaking of faces, you know what has lots and lots of faces? A yearbook. In the course of my research for this video, I managed to locate Dax Flame's high school yearbooks. There is a lot of interesting stuff to talk about here, but first I want to make it clear that I will not be disclosing any private personal information about any person. That means I'm not telling you where Dax Flame went to high school and I'm not showing you anybody's full name. I will show you an artist's rendition of one of Dax's yearbook photos, but that's it. I'm not showing you any uncensored photo of any person. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's proceed. Throughout Dax's video diaries, he often tells stories involving teachers or other students at his school. Since I have access to Dax's high school yearbooks, I am able to check whether or not the names Dax gives match up with real people in the yearbook. So let's start from the beginning. The first classmate that Dax mentions is none other than Jacob. Since the first reference to Jacob is dated to December of 2006, we should be able to find Jacob in the 2007 edition of Dax's high school yearbook. So is Jacob in the yearbook? Well, there are a few Jacobs listed in the 2007 yearbook, including one that kinda sorta looks like he could be the Jacob from the video, but personally I don't think it's him. I even took it a step further and scanned through all of the student photos looking for someone that looked like Jacob from the video, but I didn't find any matches there either. However, in Dax's 2008 high school yearbook, there is a kid that looks a lot like Jacob from the video. The reason this kid wasn't in the previous year's yearbook is because he would have been in middle school at the time. This kid's name is not Jacob, but I think it's possible he played the role of Jacob in Dax's video. But like I said, I'm not showing you any names or photos in this video, so you can and should take everything I just said with a big grain of salt. But what about all the other classmates and teachers that Dax mentions? Well, some of them do seem to be real, and others I'm not able to confirm. One of the more memorable characters from Dax Flame's video diaries was a girl named Sophia who Dax had a huge crush on. But searching through the yearbooks, there doesn't seem to be anybody named Sophia at Dax's school. Of course, this isn't proof that all of the stories involving Sophia are fake. It's possible that Sophia could be listed in the yearbook under a different name, and it's also possible that Dax simply used a fake name when talking about her. But either way, there's no traces of Sophia to be found in any of Dax's high school yearbooks. But some of the people Dax mentions in his video diaries are certifiably real as evidenced by their inclusion in the yearbooks. 
For example, Dax mentions the names of both his science teacher and his math teacher, and both of these teachers can, in fact, be found in the yearbook. Dax also at some point tells a story about a kid named AJ that's on the JV football team, and there is indeed a kid named AJ on the JV football team in the yearbook for that school year. Believe it or not, I did actually comb through all of Dax's yearbooks looking for each and every name that Dax Flame ever mentioned in his videos. The result is a mixed bag. Most of the names Dax mentions throughout his videos are just names, as in, he doesn't actually provide any additional information to go along with the names. So even though Dax mentions a kid named David, I have no way of verifying that any of the Davids found in the yearbook are the one Dax was talking about. However, there is one very unique name that Dax mentions as part of his list of the top 10 guys he wants to be friends with. I'm not going to say the name here because it is so unique, but there is indeed a kid with that name in Dax's high school yearbook. On the flip side, in one of Dax's all-time most popular videos, New Girlfriend, he tells the story of how he pranks a girl in his class by breaking her colored pencils and stealing her glasses out of her purse. In a later video, he mentions her name, and it's a pretty common name. However, surprisingly, there is no girl with that name in Dax's school, at least not in the yearbook. So, yeah, some of the names Dax mentions are for sure the names of people Dax knows in real life, but it also seems likely that Dax, at times, was either just outright lying or using fake names for certain people in his stories. But aside from all that, there is one other Dax Flame story I was able to check up on using Dax Flame's yearbooks. In September of 2007, Dax uploaded a video titled Picture Day. In this video, Dax talks about the issues he had with the photographer at his school picture day. He mentions that his mom made him wear this certain jacket, the same one he's wearing in the video, and near the end of the video he shows us the face he made for the picture. But in Dax's actual picture from his 2008 yearbook, he's just wearing a black t-shirt, and his facial expression is pretty much blank. In fact, Dax wears a t-shirt in all of his yearbook photos, which is quite unusual considering how he dresses in his videos. Dax pretty much never wears t-shirts in his videos. This could be a clue that Dax Flame in real life does not dress and act the same way he acts in his video diaries. In a more recent video from 2023, Dax talks about how he used to dress more eccentrically when he was younger, so even to this day, he maintains that he did legitimately dress the way he did in his video diaries, but since we know that he just wore regular t-shirts in each of his yearbook photos, it seems that Dax is not being honest when he says this. I think the evidence presented thus far has been fairly compelling, but now we're going to take a look at what is possibly the single most convincing piece of evidence that Dax Flame is playing a character. Throughout his video diaries, Dax Flame would often tell stories involving members of his family such as his mom, dad, uncle, cousin, and grandmother. As far as I know, Dax never explicitly states what the exact makeup of his immediate family is, but we definitely get the impression that he's an only child living at home with his mom and dad. I mean, it really just doesn't seem possible that Dax could have any siblings, especially not any around his age, because surely if he did have any siblings, he would have mentioned them at some point over the course of his nearly 150 video diary entries. But Dax Flame does have siblings, and I am very confident that at least one of his siblings was living in the same house with Dax and his parents at the time that his video diaries were being recorded. In order for me to show you all of the evidence I have that leads me to this conclusion, I would have to share personal information about Dax Flame and his family. Out of respect for their privacy, I will not be doing that. So I hope you can just trust me when I say that at the time when Dax Flame was recording his video diaries, he shared a household with not only his mom and dad, but also with one or perhaps even two or three siblings. So if Dax Flame was not playing a character in his video diaries and he was just being totally genuine, it seems extremely unlikely that he would never have mentioned any of his siblings. It could be argued that he intentionally hid the fact that he has siblings to protect their privacy, but that just seems really out of character for a kid as socially inept as Dax Flame. 
So all of the evidence we've seen so far seems to point to the conclusion that, at least in his video diary days, Dax Flame was most likely playing a character, or at the very least, heavily exaggerating a lot of his stories to the point he even staged some videos. In iDub's Ice Cream Man documentary, Dax does deny that he was ever playing a character, but he also does seem to imply that he was acting and embellishing his stories to some extent. I would just deny that any of it's a character. I'd say every single aspect of it is real because people have always gotten wrong what is, is aspects are. Like, most stories I tell are just true, but then, like, my uh, telling of it, well, it's particularly, like, ch childhood me, like, teenage me is, like, uh, not the, not the most reliable, like, like, interpretation of things, like, just to definitely have been an exaggerator all my life. But I'm even reluctant to ever say I was playing a character, like, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Why would you, why are you reluctant to say that? Because I think it implies all the stories I said were not true. Yeah. Like, how about, like, pushing your grandmother in the pool? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe details about it weren't exactly, like, yeah. true. Yeah, like, framing it in a way that it seems even more controversial. His statements are a bit contradictory, but it does seem like he's admitting that he was not being 100% truthful in his old video diaries. But what about now? I think it's safe to say that Dax Flame was just playing a character back in the day, but there is a stark contrast between the Dax Flame of the early 2000s video diary days compared to the Dax Flame of today. While the younger Dax Flame was energetic, mischievous, and just really over the top, the present day Dax Flame comes off as much more genuine and down to earth. The younger Dax Flame seems mostly incapable of understanding how his actions would impact others around him, but the Dax Flame of today seems highly considerate and almost excessively kind. Could it be that the Dax Flame we've been seeing over the past several years is a real genuine person? Well, it's a difficult question to answer, but I do think that Dax Flame today is still largely just playing a character. There isn't really any strong evidence like what we have to show that the younger Dax Flame was just a character, and I would even say that there are plenty of good reasons to think that Dax Flame isn't playing a character these days. I mean, in his recent videos he frequently collaborates with other YouTubers and friends, and he also does a lot of interacting with random people on the streets. He's hosted 20 episodes of his own game show, and he's also hosted 5 episodes of a talk show produced by iDubs. Throughout all of this, Dax Flame never breaks character. So why then do I say that I think Dax Flame is still playing a character? Well, I do think that some aspects of Dax's character are genuine. For example, I think the way that Dax presents himself generally is probably pretty genuine. Whenever Dax talks to someone, he tends to come off as a bit anxious and sometimes stumbles over his words. I don't think that's an act although I wouldn't be surprised if he does play it up a bit at times. But the reason I do think that Dax Flame is just playing a character is because so much of Dax's content seems to be very intentionally comedic. Maybe it'll be easier to understand if I show you an example. Consider this video from September 2022 titled, I Went Undercover to Help People. The video starts with Dax describing how social media makes it seem like people with differing opinions all hate each other, but he believes we can change this. In the next segment, Dax meets two men with different opinions on whether or not student loan debt should be eliminated. We see Dax talking to each man individually in different locations, and the progression of the video so far seems to be leading toward these two men being introduced to each other so that they can have a constructive conversation. But instead of that, what actually happens is that Dax dresses up like each of the men and goes into public to try to have friendly debates with random passerbys while fully impersonating the men he met before. He even goes so far as to remember key details about each of the men he's portraying so that he can work those details into conversation. He really commits to actually trying to impersonate these men. Uh, have you ever uh, seen any of like the cool ravens around here? I'm just making a documentary about ravens. Uh, something I'm excited about? A documentary that I'm making. Specifically, it's about the ravens that live in this area. I don't know. I, I'm conflicted. I'm just making a documentary about ravens. Uh -huh. To the average viewer, this seems completely ridiculous. 
I mean, the stated point of the video is to prove that people with differing opinions can remain cordial and have productive conversations. The obvious way to go about this would be to just go out and talk to people, and perhaps even arrange for some people of differing opinions to talk to each other. But in Dax's mind, the best way to prove his point is to find a person with an opinion on a topic, then later go out into public and pretend to be that person while talking to other random people. It's just... <laughs> and to top it all off, Dax continually tries to get the people he's talking to to toss a frisbee with him. But he never actually stands far enough away from someone to actually throw a frisbee properly. So we end up with this scene near the end of the video where Dax and three random guys are standing in a circle talking about student debt while basically just handing a frisbee to each other as inspirational music plays in the background. Like, if your goal was actually to prove a point, then nothing in this video makes any sense. However, if your goal was just to make a hilarious video, then everything about this video makes sense. And for any of you out there thinking, no, Dax is being genuine, everything about this does make sense from Dax's perspective. Well, what about this? Just before Dax and the three guys pass the frisbee in a circle, there's a scene where we see Dax asking the group, do you want to toss a frisbee around? Then there's a cut, and the next scene shows Dax getting the frisbee as one of the guys asks, so how is this frisbee relevant? Then, before the question is answered, there's another cut, followed by the scene where the group is talking and passing the frisbee around. Here, just watch it. Do you want to toss a frisbee around? Uh, I don't know. You have a frisbee? Mm hmm How's this frisbee relevant? Let's go. It's clear that the part where the guy asks about the relevance of the frisbee is intentionally included in the final cut. From a comedy perspective, it makes sense because it shows how confusing the whole interaction is. But it really would not make any sense at all to purposefully include this if the video really is meant to be sincere. And that's something that's common to a lot of Dax Flame's more recent videos. If you're still not convinced that Dax Flame is playing a character, then here's an exercise you can do in the comfort of your own home that might help make things a bit more clear. Pick any Dax Flame video from within the past five years. You could pick an episode of Smoothie Madness or an AI influence video or really just any video at all. Now, as you're watching this video, I want you to pay attention to the intentional aspects of the video. So things like the editing or the structure of how things are presented or the timing of when things are said. And ask yourself, if this video is meant to be sincere, do these intentional aspects of the video make sense? Then ask yourself, if this video is meant to be comedic, do the intentional aspects of this video make sense? I think you'll find that, more often than not, the intentional aspects of Dax Flame's videos only make sense if you assume that comedy is the main purpose of the video. Look, I will admit that I am not 100% sure that Dax Flame is playing a character. But whatever the case, I do encourage you to subscribe to Dax Flame's channel and watch his videos for yourself. Because if he is playing a character, then Dax Flame is possibly the most committed comedic actor to have ever lived. And if he isn't playing a character and Dax Flame really is just like that, then he's got to be one of the most unique and interesting people the world has ever seen.